So in this video, we're going to look at applying different properties for Fourier series. So in our first video, we looked at this triangle wave, which had a period of two, and we did all the work in the integration, and we found out that it has Fourier coefficients of zero for even multiples of n, and coefficients of four over n squared pi squared for odd integers. Now, if we're given another function, um, after we've already found these first Fourier coefficients, we could set up the integral and do the integration by parts and all that work all over again, which is pretty tedious. Or in some cases, we can apply these certain shortcuts, which this table up here is given in your book and it's on the course website and it's full of all the really useful uh, tricks and properties. So the best way to start is by looking at your new function and saying, how can I write this in terms of the function I already have? because we've already found Fourier coefficients for f of t. So just by looking at it, we can see this function g of t, which has a value of 1 between negative 1 and 0, and a value of minus 1 between 0 and 1. We can notice that by looking at f of t, it has a slope of 1 between negative 1 and 0, and a slope of minus 1 between 0 and 1. So by looking at it, we can notice that g of t is equal to f prime of t which is just df dt, the derivative of the function. So knowing that, we can go and look at our table. And right here, property number four is the derivative property. And it states that df dt gets transformed into j n omega naught f n. So we can write g of n equals j n omega naught f of n. But in this case, we remember that our omega naught is pi because our period's two. So that's just gonna equal j n pi times f of n. Now if you remember from the last page, uh, f of n was zero for even multiples and four n squared over pi squared for odd multiples. So this is just gonna equal zero for n even and four j over n pi for odd integers. And so a common test question is you've either already found the first couple of coefficients for one function or they've been given to you, like up here in the corner where you have f of one minus one, two minus two, and three minus three. And it's how do you find these, what are these g sub n's? And so pretty much from here, after we've already found this equation, how we've been able to find what g of n is, we can just plug in. But the one that usually you have to be more careful about is g of 0. Because g of 0 doesn't always kind of go by these rules. And it's just a good uh, idea to always just redo the integral for finding the average function. Because g of 0 is just the, the dc value, which is the average value of the function. So the g of 0 equals 1 over the period, the integral over the period g of t dt, which equals 1 half the integral from minus 1 to 1 g of t. Well, if we just look at it, the integral over one full period of g of t is just 0, because you have an area of 1 up here and an area of minus 1 down here, and it just cancels out. So in this case, our g of 0 equals 0. So another example is if we have this new function called w of t, and w of t has this value of minus five from negative one half to one half, and values of five from one half to three halves. And so another question would be, what would be these coefficients w of n for this new function? So once again, our first step is to say, how can we write this, this new function w of t, in terms of something we already know? So by looking at it, we can say it looks a lot like the one we just did. It looks pretty similar to g of t. The only difference is that it's scaled and like stretched by this factor of 5. It goes from 5 to minus 5 instead of minus 1 to 1. And it's also, it looks like it's kind of slided over. Because on the last one, this point over here was at the, the axis, the y-axis over here. So we can say that w of t 
equals 5 times g of t minus 1 half. The minus 1 half just comes from shifting it over to the right by 1 half, and the 5 is just that, that constant factor that we're scaling it by. Alright, so now we're going to use property 1 from our table, which is the scaling property. And it states that if we multiply our function by a constant, it just gets pulled through to the coefficients. We're also going to use property number 3, which is the time shift property. And that says if we shift the, pro the, the function by t naught, we have to multiply the coefficients by e to the minus j n omega naught t naught. So, so w of n, these coefficients for w, will now equal 5 times g of n times e to the minus j n omega naught times, and t naught in this case is 1 half, right? Because we said minus 1 half. So it would just be over 2. Which is the same as, because our omega naught in this case is pi again, 5 times g of n e to the minus j n pi over 2. Now from here we could just plug in different values of n for our g of n and our n in this exponent here. And that would be that would be how we would get, you know, w of 1, w of 2, and so forth. Well, once again, we have to look out for w of 0, the dc value. But in this case, it's still the same. It's still 0 because the average value of the function is 0 and the areas cancel out here and here. So, in this case, w of 0 equals 0. Now an important thing to remember is that for all these examples that we worked through, we did it in exponential form. And for this table, all these rules in here work for the exponential form of the coefficients. So it's always f of n, not a of n or c of n or anything like that. So if you want to apply these, you have to convert first to exponential form.